Okay, hi everyone, welcome back again to the Geotechnics Lab. In this video, we're gonna be looking at doing a saturation check or a B check on our sample. So, if we take a look at our geotechnical modeling board that we've draw, drawn up um, and look at the B check box, the fundamental formula for a B check is that B, the B value is equal to a change in pore pressure over a change in isotropic stress. We do that on the cell um, by closing off our back pressure valves and changing the cell pressure or the isotropic pressure within, our, within the cell. And we then monitor the change in pore walls pressure using the PPT. So um, what we need to look for is a highly saturated sample. A uh, highly saturated sample will give you the best results. You don't want um, any air within your sample um, as it can change pressure and uh, it doesn't line up with the assumption that water is incompressible in our sample. At the moment in this sample, we have some air bubbles in the feed lines. When we flushed it, we haven't flushed it enough and we'll, um, to get the air bubbles out. and. Uh, or we haven't increased the back pressure enough to dissolve the air into um, the water solution. So our B value is going to be distorted. When we change the cell pressure within our sample and the uh, pore water pressures uh, start to change, they'll be affected by a change in the pressure of the water. The water, oh, sorry, the air within our sample, these little air bubbles, will change pressure um, more elastically than will be picked up in the pore pressure transducer as the water pressure changes is in there. So that is going to affect our B value. Our B value will be lower as a consequence. If we go in and take a look at the we go in and take a look at the standards here we see a few things that we need to uh, take account of when we uh, when we are doing our saturation check or our B check. The first one is the increment of cell pressure. The cell pressure change should be in increments of it says in this line here uh, between 10 kilopascals and 100 kilopascals. So for the purposes of this B check, we're going to increase the um, cell pressure by 50 kilo kilopascals. It also says that saturation should be considered complete when a B value of at least point, uh, 0.95 is achieved and that the B value uh, may increase with time as the pore pressures dissipate um, or within, our, within our sample or they, uh, the pore pressures um, catch up with the change in cell pressure and you're given in the standards 10 minutes for the application of this. If we look at another document here, um, this is uh, a laboratory testing guide. Uh, I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, we see a table here provided by Black and Lee, uh, 1973, uh, that talks about the degree of saturation needed for uh, and the different B values that you'll get out of this. So for a 99% saturated sample, your B value, that is the change in pore water pressure over the change in isotropic stress, will be 0.93. Now, as we already mentioned, in this test, it's unlikely we're really gonna get that high. For one, the, there is obviously some air content within the lines and there might still be some in the soil, but uh, due to time constraints, we're trying to speed this up, but that's something you'll need to be aware of. Um, and also uh, we just haven't really let this saturate for long enough at the, at the sort of lower pressures. Um, we could well, wait for a very long time and hope that these, um, that more water flush into the sample or, or we'd flush our sample for longer so that the air fell out and then resaturated. But um, so for this purpose, it's unlikely we're gonna get to uh, a high value, but just for now, um, if from Black and Lee in 1973, there's another chart on that screen 
if you want to get a 95% saturation level, which isn't too bad for uh, what we're going to be doing to the sample during consolidation, during shearing, uh, we need to get a B value of 0.7. So let's look at working this out on our triaxial cell. So I put on the board here just the three steps in order to do a B check. Make sure the back pressure valve is closed, change the cell pressure, and then monitor the change in pore water pressure. And that will be over a, a period of 10 minutes as stipulated by the standard. So first things first, close the back pressure valves. Again, back pressure valves are denoted by the fact they're on the, the smaller of the pipes. And now we have those closed, I'm going to open up the controller window. Um, and we see our fields here. Um, the ones we'll be looking at will be this B value chart. I've just initialized this so that uh, the application has recorded, recorded the initial cell pressure of 350. And you can see there are the pore water pressure within the sample, now it's closed off to the back pressure controller, is uh, 289. So I'm going to set my cell pressure to 400. And set and now my cell pressure is climbing uh, up to 400 it's going up there and you can see on the yellow line as well the pore pressures are changing too we're also getting the b value increase and you can see that this is going up over time as the pore pressures catch up with the change in cell pressure and that's why we leave it for this 10 minutes here so i'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes and in nine minutes, and uh, nine minutes or so, we'll come back and we'll look at our sample as it is, see what our B value is, and, and then get a judge on whether we might need to leave this to saturate for longer, or we'll go and redo the flushing if you want 95% saturation. I think at this point we should get there. So I will see you in about nine minutes. And we're back here with 22 seconds to go on our 10 minute timer. We can look at our B check and find out what level of saturation our sample's at. And if, if we look at our application here, we have uh, a pause pressure of 334, which corresponds to a B value of 0.7 so for our purposes especially considering we have air in the feed lines as well that is being compressed we have at least a saturation of above 95 percent so for our purposes for the rest of this experiment during consolidation during shearing we should uh we, we have a good level of saturation for the rest of this experiment now again just to reiterate standards stipulate that you want around above 99% um, saturation in the sample so um, realistically what we should have done for this sample is flushed it for longer to have the water or have the air bubbles uh, flow out of the sample and saturate our sample further and um, because we couldn't put as high pressures on our back pressure controller we should really have uh, either used different equipment or left it for a lot longer but um, we're happy now with our uh, with our B check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ramp the cell pressure back down to 350. Set cell pressure to return our sample uh, to the value we had before. And you can see the, the B value uh, number there is, is tripping out. If I was to initialize this again, it would give me um, a negative B value. Um, a B value change as the uh, change is taken the, ch the change it doesn't matter what direction it's in um, the change in pore water pressure uh, it will go down unfortunately this application does get buggy at times so I don't think it's gonna um, work because I initialized it uh, after the change in cell pressure but that would still work you can do a negative B check also so once these um, once the cell pressure is reduced, it's now at 350, which is uh, good. The pore water pressure is decreasing, 
we need to wait for the pore water or the pore pressures to dissipate so that they're back down to 300, the level of the back pressure. Um, and then we can open up our valves, our back pressure valves again, and have the uh, back pressure control and the pressure within the sample. I could open these now, but I would be opening up my sample to a shock, uh, a big, a quick change in sort of 10, uh, 12 kilopascals, which you often don't want to do. So it's best an idea to let the pore pressure dissipate and then you can open up these valves. So um, we'll let that happen. Uh, you don't need to watch this. We'll return in the next video and look at consolidating our sample. We're gonna work out the uh, cell pressures and the back pressures needed to get our uh, P dash values. Uh, and then we can go through the process of consolidating our sample and, and uh, changing, our, changing our voids ratio. So thanks for watching this one. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.